want to keep his name alive. Absolutely. But it's a thin line between keeping his name alive and then just doing stuff to try to create buzz just because uh, you can get some views behind it. I can't let people attach themselves to his legacy that had no proximity to the man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And there's still people that did, even though they did have proximity to the man, it wasn't because he liked you and he chose you. It was because you had something to offer him in the moment and he moved on that. But a lot of people have taken their relationship with him and exaggerated it. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. <laughs> one thing, because um, everything I know about y'all is through him, as I said. And the one thing I miss about him is the fact that, you know, um, the way he was so outspoken about the South, the way how un unapologetically, you know what I mean? And with a lot of things that are going on and the way how some people forget about the South, um, whether through awards, through just different things, music, whatever, that I'm like, I'm wondering like, really if he was here, what would he have been saying? What would, you know, how much of a difference it would make? Pimp was, was all about on. accountability, right? If you're right, you're right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. But even deeper than that, right, Pimp's thing was everybody trip out in life. At some point, everybody trip out and somebody got to come and check you because you're tripping, mm -hmm. especially if they love you. He say, the problem is we say we love each other in the South and it's so much Southern solidarity, but we don't feel the, we got the right to check each other. But you gonna get mad in the motherfucker if a nigga from the East Coast you don't know or a nigga from the West Coast that you don't know from Adam tell you you tripping, but you gonna get mad at your partner them or niggas you already know. In order for us to win, we gotta be willing to check each other that's real. when we tripping. So that's what knocking doors down was about. Yeah. He was like, it's a bunch of niggas tripping, and if somebody don't check them and tell them they tripping, they probably don't even realize they tripping. Y'all need to get up off the dumb shit. I got a bread truck, get up off that crumb shit. Wow. You know what I'm saying? They probably think they got a, a valid reason for saying mm -hmm. what they saying and doing what they doing. But Pimp was always like, man, if everybody rich, bro, if we all really getting money, what's the beef about? That's you say I'm from you know I'm from the streets, with no beef really worth killing somebody over than your touching your family or fucking with your money. So most of you niggas just really in your feelings. That's real. Mm -hmm. We ain't gonna never get to where we trying to get in our feelings. New York artists, I know for a fact, many of them do not get along. They don't like each other. But for the sake of New York, they're willing to come together and show unity. You know what I'm saying? That's so real. And the we West Coast, the West Coast, where I know gang lines are drawn in the city, they really can't, by the code, fuck with each other. But they'll come together, if need be, for the, and throw up the dub together. We in the South actually like each other. Mm -hmm. For real. We are, all of us are really, really good fucking friends. But we don't come together and use our power together enough. What would wow. it take? I don't know, man. It's, it's Somebody got to check us. <laughs> go I'm, ahead. I, I'm going to have go to go ahead, and start checking it. niggas, man, yeah, because... Yeah. Because I don't know if they're gonna respect it from anybody. And some of them might not They'll look... Everybody it didn't take it well when Pimp Pimp's said doing it. So but did. you got to look at... Okay, They'll well, come around. If you want to, you know, is it really worth getting into it? Or should I actually listen? Is the nigga, do the nigga got a point? Mm -hmm. That was a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow, admitting they, that they was wrong and somebody else had to tell them they was tripping. You know, because you know you tripping. But, you know, sometimes you can be too close to the situation. Sometimes it takes somebody a little bit removed away from it that you respect. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the key word. Respect. It's very few niggas that everybody gonna respect the same way. That's so real. Probably man. about three or four. That's and real. Everybody, and, 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 and they gotta give a fuck. <laughs> but everybody respect you. For sure. And I do give a and fuck, so. <laughs> Man, thank y'all for man, having me. No, man, thank real. you, man. Like I said, I, I think it's dope that, you know, over the last couple of years, I've been going to work with my wife. 
Like, yeah. and we've like working together. Yeah, She's always been on, on the job site in the studio at the concerts and all of that. But we do the radio show now. And I we know. Actually, we actually go to work together. And that was rough because I kept trying, like I said, I kept wanting to do it very polished. Right? Let's write down what we're talking about. The songs we're going to play, we're going to go through it like that. And then Truck would say something crazy off brand in the moment and my wife would react to it and then the conversation would be about that and not about the stuff that I had pre-organized that we would mm -hmm. talk about. That's frustrating. The That's more I kept trying to it. organize it, the worse it got. Mm -hmm. So now, we just go in and start talking. Yeah. That's me. That's what. That's, that's it. We just, I'm not we just, organized and he's just like. I'm like, yo, I'm like Queenie. I'm like, let's do this. You know what I'm <laughs> so it, I'm, I just stopped fighting it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I stopped fighting it. But that, I'm very logic minded. I, I'm really trying to map this out and blueprint it and, yeah, and try to figure her. out this and superstructure how this thing needs to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of times, if it ain't got no real life and energy in it, it ain't gonna work. No, that's way. that's it. That's you know what it. I'm so man, for us, we we work loose because we control the show. We can do whatever we want. So you say you watch our show. Mm -hmm. How we doing? Y'all doing great. Y'all doing great. I think I think y'all are, are finding ways to perpetuate off of energy. Like if you get a host and a guest in, and they have connections with other artists, that lends itself to continuing yeah. those stories and branching it out. Mm -hmm. So you could talk to one artist and that artist can lead to three different interviews. That's right. You know what I'm That's saying? Right. But y'all gotta be open to, you know what? Should we go tell that? Should we figure out that story? And then you take a chance and then they come in here and you find out one of those three know two people, mm -hmm. one know three, right? So it just branching out by being open, right? Like I had to learn to be open to let let the stories be told, let people speak their minds, let them get all their thoughts off their chest. It's gonna help somebody. It's, yeah, but even further, it's gonna help y'all because it right. will lead you to other that ways. ways. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Me saying this about Steve Belos, y'all, and that's the thing, y'all yeah, being receptive. See, so that shows you being receptive to the culture, and you're mm -hmm. not stuck on yourself. Yeah, right. Because right? if you're stuck on yourself, you'd only be you wouldn't be watching other podcasts. You'd that's be right. Fully concentrated on boss talk, but y'all want to learn, y'all want to grow, and y'all want to make sure y'all don't miss y'all mark. I think Behind Him is a great example of how Love to speak it. to your local culture, mm -hmm. how to embrace it, and tell stories that actually can resonate outside of where you at because their journey is so compelling. Yeah, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying. So by y'all talking to Steve Below, that actually helps Below. Yeah, mm -hmm. because yeah. it allows him to really actually talk about a lot of shit he's been sitting on for a long yeah. time. You know, he gets to learn that he's actually been appreciated the whole time. Because I believe he felt his job, his input was thankless mm -hmm. for so wow. long. And then, and there was, I mean, I'll be very honest. Like Chad and Steve Below were actually creating a, a new level of Southern right. production. Like Swishes and Doja is where oh. is where they were going. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. like that. They were going there with that shit, and I mean, when he when Pimp brought him in, Pimp was like, "Hey, this nigga the truth. Like, this the next nigga right here. Like, I'm telling you, he cold." And I got to working with him a lot personally. You know what I'm saying? And we made a lot of incredible music, and I feel like we really only touched the tip of the iceberg with what he with can him. do. I believe if if the the if I believe if the experience had been better, he would have given more of himself over to it. And he would have really reached a level of production. Not, he's still cold. He's sending me shit. He's oh, still he cold. Bad, I tried to turn one around. He sent me something that, that he had sent me years ago that I never did. That was like perfect for the rodeo. We just couldn't get it done in time. Man. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I shudder and, and I shudder to think at where Steve Below would have been because Pimp would was putting him in a position to have a better experience in the industry, have better ways of navigating the space, better ways of executing and making sure you was getting your bread properly. Wow. And once Pimp was gone, he felt like that's it. That's like, it's, I don't think this is for me anymore. That's the only yeah. person I really felt was finna actually help me, further me and protect me. I'm just, I'm, wow. I'm, I'm done here. We didn't realize how many people was really depressed behind Pimp um, passing. You know, because everybody, everybody didn't get closure. Yeah, because like, we went bumpy, not, not bumpy, I mean, Bobo came on, he talked about his yeah, depression. Yeah, did that in seven years. He talked about his depression, Steve Below, all of that, and in my mind, you Easy. know what I was, it just, it just, right, I was broken, I was broken as a man, like I had to be fully rebuilt. And I thank my wife for making sure I got in a good church and my pastor for helping me build my spirit and my soul back up. Because I was a broken man, I was like, 
That's it. And the crazy thing was, I was prepared to move past it because not emotionally, but professionally, um, because we had already represented for him in his absence mm-hmm. yeah. when he was locked up. So I'm like, the same template is going to work, but it's going to be a different expectation because <coughs> the free pimp C movement was was executed to the sense that, well, we just got to say it till he come home. Mm-hmm. Right? So there was always the expectation of at some he's point, gonna he's going to come home and we get to get back together and do this. Mm-hmm. There was a serious level of finality, the most fine, the highest level of fine. He's gone. He's gone. You yeah. know what I'm yeah. saying? And that hurt more than anything. Man, that killed it, man. Like I said, <coughs> far, but to see you say, it's still UGK for life gave me hope. Look, look, you did that in the midst of your hurt. A wise woman once told me somebody got to live to tell the story. You, you and did I'm, that. I'm blessed that I'm still here to tell the story and make sure that people know the truth, truth about what we do. Because once I'm gone, everybody going to pop up and start telling you Tell the interpretation was, of what mm-hmm. it is. So while you can get it from the horse's mouth, I'm, that's why I'm here places like this, because everybody has a different perspective and everybody has a different reason for why they want to talk to me about this stuff. Man, listen, I, I really, I tiptoed in, 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 in dealing with UGK subjects because I respect it so much. I told you that when me and you talked. I talk, appreciate that. You know, but even, even still, to this day, when I hear you talk about people using the merch, or I remember not selling T-shirts to certain people had when he first passed. Mm-hmm. That's how I met Easy, to be honest with you, because I was like, "I'm where them come from?" <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, if it ain't going to them, I'm not doing it. I've right. been doing that, and that was years ago. But just that part right there, man, is so touchy because we want to keep his hope alive, we want to keep his name alive. Absolutely. But it's a thin line between keeping his name alive and then just doing stuff to try to create buzz just because. Uh, you can get some views behind it. I can't let people attach themselves to his legacy that had no proximity to the man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And there's still people that did, even though they did have proximity to the man, it wasn't because he liked you and he chose you. It was because you had something to offer him in the moment and he moved on that. But a lot of people have taken their relationship with him and exaggerated it. Yeah. Right. A yeah. lot of people have tried to connect themselves to his legacy that were not connected to him in the way they're trying to let the world see mm-hmm. it. So while I'm here, it's important that I tell the truth as much as possible. You know what I'm saying? Because it's harder. It's harder for for the truth to for the truth to. It's harder for a lie to die than the truth to live. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That's and so. And then one day I'm going to be gone. And I'm yeah. telling you, I can tell you right now, it's going to be niggas coming out the woodworks y'all ain't never seen in your life. But there's a lot of people that stole shit, music, clothing, equipment, stole a lot of shit, and they, but they know they can't pull a lot of that shit out and release a lot of that shit because I'll be on their ass. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.